Here are some more classic examples I'd like to show you. This molecule is called benzene. You'll note that it has a pattern of every other bond being a double bond. You can imagine then every single one of these bonds swinging like a door on a hinge to close and thrust the next bond over one position clockwise, thereby converting this molecule into the molecule shown to the right. We can, of course, reverse the process and return back to the position from whence we came. In reality, this molecule, benzene, does exist somewhere in between these two, with these pi electrons being delocalized evenly all around the ring. Huh? What's that? Remember how I always thought there wasn't a way to kill a tune? Well, Doom found the way. Turpentine, acetone, benzene. He calls it the dip. I'll catch the rabbit, Mr. Valiant. Then I'll try him, convict him, and execute him. <laughs> Here's another example. You can imagine the pi electrons found in this carbon-carbon double bond swinging like a door on a hinge to close here, forming a carbon-carbon double bond here. The only way of being able to do that, however, is if I thrust these pi electrons up onto this oxygen, giving me a negative charge on it. The carbon over here that formerly had eight electrons around it now only has six and therefore gets a positive charge. I can, of course, go in reverse by having these electrons come back down to close and give me a carbon-oxygen double bond while pushing these two electrons back out to this position. And here's another example very similar to the one I showed you earlier. So let's take a look at a chapter problem. Which of the following compounds have delocalized electrons? For those that do, draw their different resonance contributors. Now I'm going to show you the answers to these, but I'd like you to pause it if you wish and take time to see if you can figure out the answer on your own before moving on. Looking at our first molecule, you'll note that it has this structure. The question we have may be then, can these lone pair electrons on the oxygen somehow push down and delocalize into this carbon-carbon double bond? The way we might imagine that happening is if these electrons push down like this and form an oxygen-carbon double bond like this. Question is, do you see any problems with this molecule? Well, if you look closely, you'll note that this carbon right here has 10 total electrons around it. That is, it has five total bonds. Now, I've told you that that is a no-no. Carbons don't want five bonds and can't have five bonds. Thus, this is not a legitimate resonance contributor. And in fact, because this double bond is too far away from this oxygen, I can't come up with any way of being able to have these lone pairs push directly into it in some fashion. There is one resonance contributor I can conceive of, however, and that would be if these pi electrons actually pushed up onto one of the two carbons. If that occurred, the carbon who just received them would get a negative charge, and the one who just lost them would get a positive charge. So this is a legitimate resonance contributor for this molecule. Let's take a look at this example. Can these lone pairs somehow push in and form a resonance contributor involving these pi electrons? You'll notice that in the previous example, the oxygen lone pairs were too far removed from the double bond. In this case, however, the nitrogen lone pairs are coming immediately off one of the two carbons that are participating in the double bond. Thus, if these lone pairs came in to form a nitrogen-oxygen double bond, pushing these two pi electrons up and onto this carbon, I would get this structure. The nitrogen now is a positive charge because he has four bonds around him, sharing more electrons than nitrogen likes to in a neutral state. And the carbon that just gained these two electrons now gets a negative charge. I could, of course, push these back down here to reform the carbon-carbon double bond and push these two pi electrons back into the nitrogen, neutralizing its charge to revert back to the molecule from whence we started. Here's another example. You can imagine, of course, the nitrogen lone pairs pushing in to form a nitrogen double bond with the carbon shown here to the right. In doing so, however, the pi electrons being shared between these two carbons would have to push up and onto the carbon shown at the upper right-hand corner, giving it a negative charge and the nitrogen a positive charge. Once again, that nitrogen still has a full octet. The reason it's positively charged is because it's sharing more electrons than it likes to. Nitrogen in a neutral state likes to have three bonds. This nitrogen 
has four. At this point, these lone pair electrons that are attached to this carbon could conceivably thrust down and form a carbon-carbon double bond here. If they did so, however, these electrons would have to push up and onto this carbon in the lower left-hand corner, giving me this resonance contributor. Now, you might be tempted to think, well, can't I just have these lone pair electrons push down here to form a carbon-nitrogen bond and thereby neutralizing this positive charge? The answer is no, because if you did so, nitrogen would have five bonds around it and 10 electrons violating the octet rule. We can, however, go in reverse, pushing these electrons into here to reform this carbon-carbon double bond, these electrons down here to reform this carbon-carbon double bond, and these electrons up and into this nitrogen, neutralizing its charge to revert back to the molecule from which we came.